Hello, I'm David Gay, the Tektronix in Keithley Strategic Account Manager in the Pacific Northwest. And in this video, I'm going to give a brief demonstration on how to use the user defined filter functionality on the five and six series MSO. So let's get started. To take advantage of this functionality, you need a five series or six series MSO running firmware version 1.34 or later and option UFDLT. Taking a look at my setup, I have a 10 megahertz square wave that is being generated by the internal function generator on the six series. And I've got that going into channel one here. To create a filter, the, the first thing I will do is add a new math and when the menu pops up, I will choose math type filter. Then I choose my source. I can choose any of the flex channels, a reference waveform or another math waveform. So in this case, I'll just go with uh, channel one. Then I'll hit create filter. From there, my filter creation menu will pop up. You can see at the moment we have seven different filter types to choose from. I'm going to go with a low pass filter. I have a variety of filter responses that I can choose from. Your choice of filter is going to depend on your application and, and what you're looking to do. I'll keep it as a Butterworth filter. I need to choose my filter order. I will go with a, a fifth order. The higher order will give me a sharper roll off at my cutoff frequency. For cutoff frequency, I'm going to go with 30 megahertz, which will be right on my third harmonic. And next, I will go to apply filter. Actually, if I had a filter already saved, I could load the filter here, but I'm creating one from scratch. So apply filter. I can see here the magnitude and phase response of my filter uh, with my 3 dB point at 29.99 megahertz. And there's a note down here, the filter is valid for these sample rates. Uh, I'm gonna come back to that later because that is important. There's my impulse response. And here's my step response. Close out these menus. You can see down here, my filter has been applied. So on my math waveform, which is being displayed. So that's pretty simple. As I previously noted, the sample rate is going to be an important parameter as you're trying to fine tune your filter. So let, let's take a look at what I'm talking about. I will add a new filter. This time I'm gonna apply the filter to my math waveform in case you didn't believe me that you can apply <laughs> the filter to the math waveform. And let's create that filter. I'll do another low pass filter. Let's try a different one. So if I had chosen elliptical, you can see I've got some different parameters I can add. Uh, band pass ripple, stop band attenuation. If I choose Gaussian, I have uh, filter order and standard deviation. I'm going to increase my filter order. Just do a nice round 100 here. Cutoff frequency, I want to capture only the first harmonic for this example. Let's set it to 15 megahertz. Enter, apply that filter. Okay, so there's what my filter response looks like. But in the background, you may notice I don't see a math waveform displayed. If I look at the math badge, there's actually an error message there that says invalid sample rate. Going back to that message I pointed out before, this filter is valid for the sample rates between 62.5 mega samples per second and 250 mega samples per second. Looking at my horizontal menu, my sample rate is currently 312 mega samples per second, so it's beyond what I can do here. So I would have a couple options in this case. My cutoff frequency needs to be 0.05 to 0.45 of my sample rate on the scope. So I could either increase the cutoff frequency and I think like 16 megahertz or so would allow me to display the math waveform or I could go into my horizontal menu and slightly decrease my sample rate to 250 which was within the range that was acceptable and you can see now my waveform is being displayed pretty much just a sine wave which you would expect when you're only capturing the first harmonic of a square wave that's user-defined filters in a nutshell thanks for watching